Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how you can get your album printed to vinyl as an independent artist. Now I'm gonna go off of the steps that I took. I am by no means an expert in this area. When I set out to have my album printed to vinyl, I didn't know what I was doing and I had to do all of the research from scratch. So I'm going to share with you my experience and the steps I took to have it go from a digital release to a physical release on vinyl. If we haven't met before, my name's Joey Clarkson and I'm an independent singer-songwriter, voiceover artist, and audiobook narrator living in London, UK with my husband and our two palm skis. Now, before we jump into things, I want to go over the steps that we'll be covering in this video. First up, we have deciding that you want to print your album to vinyl. That's a big decision, so we're going to go over the different reasons people would have for doing that and how you can justify it yourself. Second up is deciding which manufacturer you're going to go with. This is a really important step and this needs to be done before anything else in my my opinion. Third up, we have mastering your album for vinyl. Before I set out, I didn't realize you needed a different master for your vinyl, but you do, and it's a very important step. So we're gonna go over why that's important, and we're going to go over roughly how much that cost for me and where I had mine done. Number four, the artwork. Obviously, this is something that we all need to do, and we know that we need to do it, but for some reason, I overlooked how much time this would take. So we're going to go over how you can do your own artwork on a budget, and we're gonna go over the experience of how I kind of felt about that. Fifth, proofing your artwork. This is a very short step, but it was such a stupidly stressful time for me that I thought it was important and it should have its own step because you need to be mentally prepared for the stress that that will involve. <laughs> Six, submission and payment. Again, this is a really short step, but it was also a very stressful step, so I thought it deserved its own little special moment in this video. Seven, setting your price. Now we'll talk more about that in detail later, but just know that that is a very important step to happen before you announce your album is for sale or pre-sale. Trust me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Listing your album for pre-sale. Not everybody decides to do this, but I'm gonna tell you why I think you should. Nine approving your mock-up copy. This isn't a step that I took, but lots of people will want to take this step. Now this will lengthen the process of having it manufactured, but I actually think it's a really good step if you have the time for it because it does alleviate a lot of stress. 10, shipment. The packaging that I used, costs of shipping, and then we are going to talk about how awesome it felt to hold that final and to put it in the mail and know that even though I wasn't sending out that many, it was just this amazing, incredible moment. Which leads us to not a point, but to the case study at the end where I'm going to go over all of the costs that I put out in detail, tally it all up and let you know how much I spent and how much I made and then how much I lost. All right, guys. Before we jump into all of that, I want to show off my album so that you can have a chance to see what mine physically looks like. And I'm going to talk about why mine might have been a bit more expensive than the other ones, and why I think it's not always in your best interest to go for the most affordable option. Let's do this. Alright, this is my album, The Year That Never Happened. We did choose a few upgrades on this, and I'm going to go over our selections now. The first one you'll notice is that we went with the metallic gold foil printing for both the album title and the artist's name. The cost was approximately an extra pound per unit, but it was more than worth it. We wanted the font to be as close to the British passport font as possible, as this album is about the year we lost fighting for my right to immigrate and join my husband in the UK. Kind of a middle finger to the government, so I didn't mind paying the extra pound. We went with 180 gram cherry red 12 inch vinyl. We opted for a matte finish on the cover art and upgraded to include a thicker inner sleeve with printing, so I had room to thank people. We had 200 of these printed. I didn't sacrifice quality for cost because putting out something I'm really proud of was my main priority. I know people really appreciate the high quality too. Okay, on to the tips. Please buy my album. <laughs> okay guys, let's jump into this. Point number one, deciding that you want to print to vinyl. Now this seems like a no-brainer, but for me there are two reasons you would decide to print to vinyl. Number one, you actually have an audience for it that are demanding that you print to vinyl. And you will know your audience wants vinyl when they start asking you repeatedly for it, and you realize you have vinyl collectors in your audience and they would really appreciate it. Not everybody has that. I have a few, but it wasn't enough to actually justify printing as many vinyl as I did. Leads me to point number two, you've always dreamt of having vinyl. Now, one of these is gonna give you 
potentially an income and is going to pay off in the long run, and the other one is going to fulfill your like childhood dream. I think both options are worth it because when you look at it, we're doing music because we love doing music. We're not doing it to get rich anymore. Those days are gone. I honestly think that there's nothing better than doing something for yourself. For me, I printed vinyl because I've always wanted to have vinyl. The lucky ones will be doing this for both reasons. They'll be printing it because they have a demand and because they have a dream. Let me know which one you are in the comments. Okay, we're moving on to point number two. Finding your manufacturer. There are so many options to choose from. Lots of different places offer lots of different things. There are two different kinds of printing for vinyl. So we have DMM and we have lacquer. I had my album printed with the DMM method, which is actually a newer method. Lacquer is the traditional way of printing to vinyl. It creates a warmer sound to it. DMM is direct metal mastering, and that's kind of the newer technology. It is more precise from what I understand, but it does create a brighter sound. The reason it's important to decide who you're going to be using first is so that you can know what they are going to require from you. You can't do any of the other steps until you know what your manufacturer needs from you. And a lot of the time, that means that they will have specific sound requirements for the master that you provide them with. I can't talk about the lacquer experience because I don't have any experience in that, but I can say that with direct metal mastering, all that my manufacturer required from me were the sound files. I didn't have to have it cut to the metal myself. They did that at the vinyl manufacturing plant. They did have very specific sound requirements for the wave files that I delivered. So find who you wanna print with and do that before you move on to mastering. Now here's some questions I had for the different manufacturers when I was looking for somebody to work with. Okay, number one question for me was cost. How much was it going to cost? Is it something that I could afford? Do you want a sleeve that's printed? Do you want vinyl with a booklet? Do you want vinyl that opens up like a flap? All of these things are going to add costs to your project and you wanna make sure you're able to keep it within your budget. After that, I moved forward and we discussed turnaround time. This was really important for me because I didn't follow the advice that I'm going to give you later in this video. And I picked the release date and announced that I was going to be printing it to vinyl before before I had somewhere to print it to vinyl confirmed. You'll notice that a lot of places have like an eight to 12 week turnaround. So you really have to know your stuff before. That's eight to 12 weeks from the point of artwork and sound confirmation. Talking about turnaround time is really important and confirming when that turnaround time starts. Is it from the point of first contact or is that from the point of final artwork confirmation and proofing? Because those things take time. As we discussed earlier, there is DMM or lacquer. Discussing which method they use is really important so you know what sound files to provide them with and if you need to provide them with a physical cut. You'll also want to ask them for copies of their artwork template so that you can get a head start on designing your album artwork. Step number three mastering your album for vinyl. Now, as we mentioned earlier, this is a really important step because your album is going to sound different on vinyl than it does on digital platforms or CDs. You need to have a specific master and you need to have somebody who has experience in doing that. You don't, you don't wanna pooch the mastering. I think that a good master starts with your original master. So when I had my album originally mastered for digital distribution, I had it mastered by Peter Hewitt Dutton at the bakery in Los Angeles. I love working with Peter. He was a recommendation from my sound engineer and co-producer, Ryan John Griffiths. And honestly, I've never had a bad experience with him. He's great. He's kind of mid-range pricing wise, so it's a bit more expensive than maybe with other people. But I personally believe that investing in having Peter master my album for digital distribution really paid off in the end because when I decided I wanted to have my album mastered for vinyl I decided I wanted to do it at Abbey Road Studios. The price wasn't too much higher than other places and I just figured hey I, I like I love this album I would love this experience and it would be really cool to say it was mastered at Abbey Road. My mastering session ended up being attended and it was also just by chance done on the 50th anniversary of the Beatles album. That was an incredible experience. Now I got my album mastered by Alex Wharton there and they require a two hour minimum session, which means it's gonna take at least two hours to master your album. Alex has worked with artists such as Mumford and & Sons and Bring Me The Horizon, so I was like shaken when I went in there. I was so excited to work with him. Okay, so here's the, exactly the email that I got back from them when I originally inquired. It says, good to hear from you and I hope that we can work together soon on your album project. Our hourly mastering rate is 185 pounds and for 6.5 tracks allow between four to five hours at 100 185 pounds per hour for mastering. Well, I, didn't, I don't know where I got 6.5. 
I think it was 7.5 because I've got eight tracks on the album, but one is a half track. Anyways, she said, once approved, we can cut to vinyl at the same hourly rate of 185 pounds, allow for 1.5 hours and two times lacquers at 90 pounds each. My case was a bit different because I wasn't having my album cut to lacquer because I printed with WM Phono in Poland and they printed DMM directly. So all I needed to do was have the files digitally remastered for vinyl so that the people at WM Phono could then transfer that to the DMM direct metal plates. I, I don't even remember what they're called, but they do their thing over there. So I didn't need to worry about the 90 pound lacquer fee. And little did I know that I wouldn't actually have to allow for 6.5 hours at all. When we showed up at the studio, we met Alex. It was lovely. We had a coffee. We went upstairs. And when he listened to the album, he actually went through it and said, who did the mastering on this? I don't really need to change anything. This is perfect for vinyl. I cried right then and there. He sat there and listened to it and said, I wouldn't change a thing. Your original mastering on this is perfect for vinyl. It sounds great and it's gonna transfer to vinyl just great. So I was super emotional, I cried, and then I was like, Alex, if you don't change anything on my vinyl, does that mean I can still say that it was remastered for vinyl at Abbey Road Studios? And he says, you know what, I'll make like one tweak. I'll do a very small tweak. You will barely be able to hear a difference, but then you can say it was mastered here. We were actually in and out before the hour was over and Alex only charged us for half an hour of work there because there was nothing to do on the album. So my initial investment in having my album mastered really well at the beginning for digital distribution paid off tenfold because our trip to Abbey Road with a tour and having the confirmation that it was ready for vinyl production from Alex Wharton, that ended up costing me around 150 pounds at the end of the day. And we got a tour of Abbey Road on the same day of the Beatles 50th anniversary. So when you have your album mastered for digital distribution, do it right the first time because that will save you time and money in the long run when you have it remastered for vinyl. Okay, moving on to number four, artwork. So you've got to decide whether or not you want to put a budget aside for having somebody design your artwork or whether or not you want to actually design your artwork yourself. If you do it yourself, you're going to have to give yourself time and you're also going to have to learn how to use an editing program if you don't already know. I'm really lucky and I have a photographer for a sister, so I have a bit of basic Photoshop skills. I wouldn't say they're anything to call home about, but I didn't want to bother her and ask her to put aside like days of free editing for me like I have done in the past. Thank you, Katie. You're an amazing sister. If you want to check out her work, you can do so right here or in the link below, I'll link down. So I decided I was going to do this myself. Now, a few things that I really wish I did, I wish I gave myself more time to do it. I was working full time at the time and there's just so many details that go into designing vinyl album artwork. It would have been really nice to stress less about that. I had Photoshop installed on my computer because my sister's really nice and let me have the login for hers. But if you want to subscribe to a monthly plan, I think it's around like 23 pounds a month and I actually do that for myself now. I think it's worth it. And if you only need to use it for your album, you can just pay for one month and then you can cancel your subscription. So there's no lock-in period for that, I think. I'll put a link to that below as well if anybody's interested. I wish I gave myself more time. That's it. I just wish that I was able to like step away from the album and then come back to it like a week later with fresh eyes the way that we would with mixing our album. I didn't leave myself enough time. I'm really proud of what I did and I wouldn't change anything about the design I have, but getting there was stressful. So I would say give yourself enough time to do it if you plan on doing it yourself. And if you know that you don't have the time or the skills to do it and you want to make sure it's perfect, just hire somebody to do it. It's really important to be providing people with something that is a high quality and something that is worth the amount that you're charging them for. It's not enough just to have a good album that sounds nice. You have to think about the presentation of it and you have to provide your audience with something that they want to hold and show off or they're not going to hold it and show it off. And that's how you get like organic reach. Anyways, okay, so the next two steps are going to be really quick, but I thought they deserved their own steps in this step process process. I have a weird accent now because I live in England and I'm starting to sound a bit like my husband. Five, proofing your artwork. Really short step. Again, I wish I gave myself more time. Make sure you give yourself time because you're going to want to proof it. You're going to want to have your producer proof it as well because they'll be able to catch any of the technical things you might have missed or titles that you might have messed up if you have a good relationship with your producer. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> and then you're going to want to have somebody you know proof it for you as well. Preferably somebody who's like not in the music industry so they can just tell you if it's something that they would be interested in picking up and actually buying and if it has the information that they're looking for on an album. But in order 
order to do that, you actually need to give yourself time because people need to have time to do those things. You can't expect to send them an album and have it proofed right away, even though that's what I did. Again, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> um, just give yourself time. I wish I gave myself more time. Six, submitting the payment. Oh man, this is another short one, but this was one of the most stressful. I would say proofing the artwork was the most stressful part for me because I was so terrified it was gonna mess up somebody's name or somebody's title or forget to thank someone. Making the payment? That was just depressing. I mean, it was like empowering and depressing, but watching that much money leave my bank account after I paid so much for the album already, just prep yourself for that. Set aside a little bit of money so that you can still survive after you buy your vinyl because it's expensive. I'll go over all of the costs at the end of this, like I mentioned before, but just know that it will feel like your stomach is falling out of your body and um, it'll feel exciting at the same time. Just be prepared for that. Seven, setting your price. This next step is like super important that you do it in this order you need to add up all of the costs associated with having your album printed to vinyl. So that's the mastering, the actual physical production. Don't forget to include VAT and shipping costs. Also, to think about what you'll need after you have the vinyl physically in your hand to get it to the people who are buying it. You're gonna need to look at mailer boxes and shipping costs for national and international, and also for traced and tracking if you wanna do that for your albums. We're gonna look into the shipping at the end of this, and I'm gonna give you some good tips on how I ended up shipping my album, but add up all of those costs and then figure out how much it's going to cost you per unit to produce your album to vinyl before you set a cost for how much you wanna sell it for. You obviously wanna look at the market, see what other independents are selling their album for, but you want to take into consideration that you need to make a profit off of this. If you wanna sell it through your own store online, I mean, you only have to worry about your own markup, but if you wanna sell it in an actual record store, they usually take between like 25 to 50% of the sale. That's not of the profit margin, that's of the sale of your record. So if you sell your record for 22 pounds, they'll be taking 11 pounds of that. And if your record costs 11 pounds to print to vinyl, you're not going to be making a profit. Eight, listing your album for free sale. Oh my word! If you are wondering whether or not you should list for pre-sale or whether or not you should wait until you physically have it in your hands, I would highly suggest listing it for pre-sale. Make sure you've done all of the other steps before this, that everything is proofed and sent off so you know exactly when you're gonna have those albums in your hand. Then give yourself a little bit of a window. Give yourself more time than I did. I gave myself a week. That was a stressful week because I was like, are the albums gonna show up on my doorstep or aren't they? Is shipping gonna hold up at customs? Will I have them for my album? release. I did. I was lucky, but I wish I gave myself a bit more time. There's a reoccurring theme there in this video. Three or four weeks would probably be nice just to kind of give yourself room for error. Room for things you don't have control over to happen so that you can still have them in hand on the day that you said you would ship them. The reason I think it's important to list for pre-sale before your album release rather than after is because a lot of your promotion is gonna happen in the build-up to your album release. So you wanna use every opportunity you have as an artist to sell organically and honestly. And that comes in the journey of building up to the release. Let your audience in on what you're doing, tell them what you're planning on doing, and then shout about the fact that they can pre-buy your album and support you in the process. I used Shopify. I got myself a Shopify store and I linked it up to Single Music. And Single Music is a Shopify app and a separate program that allows you to link digital sales of albums to your physical merch sales. So that on the day of your release, when you've sold however many vinyl and however many CDs, you will have digital copies of those sales associated with each physical sale, which means that you'll be able to have all of those sales count towards charting. I'm not talking about two sales per unit, I'm talking about one sale because that means when you sell, what that digital sale that's accompanying your physical sale will count towards the Billboard charts and I think the Rolling Stones charts they're probably working towards the official charts. Figure out if that's worth it for you. If you think that's gonna be worth it, then do it. It does cost a little bit of money. I think it was close to $10 a month and my Shopify store was close to around 30. So it was quite an investment, but I made sure I only set it up when I was ready to actually start the sale so I could maximize the amount of use I got from my store while minimizing the cost. Okay, step number nine, approving the proof or the demo or whatever you wanna call it. This is an option that a lot of manufacturing plants offer. WM Bono offers it as well, but obviously it's gonna add time into the manufacturing process, which is why I chose not to do it. If I had more time, which I wish I did, I would have loved to have the opportunity to have one 
copy in my hand so I could physically look at it, proof it, play it, and then approve it and have the rest made up. If I was going to do this again, I would add that step because that's just for peace of mind and it allows you to fix any little mistakes that might have happened along the way and just make sure that all of that money you just sunk into printing a bunch of vinyl is going to good use on a product that you're going to be happy with. Most manufacturing places do offer that as an option for an additional cost and an additional time added to your order. I would suggest taking that. Okay, it's step number 10. Can't believe we're here already. I say already, but I've been filming this for so long because I keep making mistakes. Step number 10. I'm going to call this the tears and the joy and the shipping. This was a very emotional step for me because this meant I physically had the albums in my hand and it was wrapping up not only the whole experience of printing it to vinyl and making the album, but also the personal experience I had and what the album was about. So this was a very big moment it had a lot of closure for me and it felt incredible. I was very, very tearful and for very good reason because it's beautiful and I love it. And holding this will never get old to me. I really love it. But this is a really important part because this is shipping. So we talked about the fact that you would need to price this out and that you would need to price out what you need to ship it in because you didn't spend all of your hard earned money on printing the vinyl of your dreams just to stick it in the mail and have it crushed and lose money because you didn't package it properly. So I ended up using record mailers that I ordered off of Amazon. I did shop around at some of the local record stores, but none of them seemed to offer it. So I went with the easy option, which was Amazon, and I was actually really impressed with what they sent. The mailers that I bought came with these little fragile stickers that you could stick onto the outside of them, which was really reassuring for me when they went in the post. Very simple to use. Honestly, I had a hard time finding anything for under a quid. My cardboard mailer box ended up coming out at £11.20 for 10 which means the cost per unit was... Oh god, I'm so bad at math. Pound 11 or something like that. The other thing you have to think about is mailing. I didn't go for track and trace because in the end I looked at it and I was like, I have 200 vinyl that I need to sell. Probably not gonna do that for years. I'm gonna chance whether or not it'll make it to the person in one piece and in a good amount of time. And if it doesn't, I'll just eat the cost and send another rather than paying that much more to ship them and track them and trace them. And rather than charging my audience more to have them because I didn't want to charge people more than I had to. Get yourself a good mailer if you're interested in looking at those so you can see which ones I use. I'll pop a link below that will be an affiliate link so I'll make like something like pennies on the order but it won't cost you any more to order from my link. Okay, so you can probably tell by the fact that the lighting has changed, my hair has changed a bit, and I probably look a little bit more awake that I needed to take a break from filming and go over some numbers. And then I needed to get myself a glass of whiskey because I haven't gone over those numbers yet and really compared it. I haven't filed the taxes for this yet, so I haven't needed to like really sit down and compare everything until now. And um, I still don't regret, I do not regret having my album printed. I 100% cannot get over the fact that I have a vinyl record and to me this is worth every penny. This has been such a dream. So here we go. This is the moment everybody's probably been waiting for. How much in total did I spend on printing my album to vinyl? How much did I make back? And how much did I lose in the process? I'm gonna pull my notes out. Here we go. We're gonna dive into these costs. My total cost from WM Phono for the cost of manufacturing 200 of my vinyl came to, drum roll, 1,693 pounds and 46 pence. So that's actually not too bad, not too bad. We're gonna move on to the next cost. I had Shopify with the app for single music for two months. I did it for a month before my album was released and a month following my album's release. Shopify cost 29 USD, the app cost 15 USD per month. So that came to a total of 44 USD per month times two came to 88 USD. And then when you convert that into British pounds, that turns into 67 pounds. So 67 pounds plus 1,693 pounds and 46 pence comes to a total of, we are now running up at 1,910 pounds and 46 pence for 200 vinyl. Okay, we're still doing pretty okay, because at this point, they're still under 10 pounds a piece. Haven't got to shipping prices yet though, so let's move on. I ended up having to order three packs of the mailers, which came to a total of 33 pounds and 60 pence, plus 20 national stamps at approximately two pound 50, 
equaling 50 pounds, and six international stamps at approximately four pound 50, equaling 27 pounds, to bring up a stamp total of 77 pounds. In addition to this, I ordered a box of individually wrapped Twizzlers because are very chewy now. So I could stick these in with the vinyl because they match the shade of the vinyl that I ordered. It was just a nice touch that I wanted to add. It surprised people a bit. Everybody likes to get a sweet every now and then. So the box of Twizzlers was £15.99. Then I had a box of thank you cards and I actually ordered two boxes of these thank you cards. I have them right here. They're really sweet. They've got gold foil so they kind of match the front of my album but I wanted to write individual notes to everybody who pre-ordered vinyl and CDs. And that came to a total of £17.98. My mailing labels. These really saved my life. I was able to write out people's addresses really easily. These were actually fairly affordable. I only ordered one and it was £11.11. .11. All of my mailing things and my additional quirky things came to a total of £155.68. When we add that together with my vinyl and Shopify costs of £1,910.46, it comes to a total of £2,061.14. I mean, I hope I'm doing this math properly. I am pretty frazzled from editing and these numbers are making me a bit nervous, to be honest. All right, now let's get into how many I sold and how much I ended up making and inevitably losing or not making back yet. So I ended up making 21 pre-sales of vinyl before my album was officially released and I ended up selling five more via the mail afterwards. So that's where those stamps came into play. I did have two release shows. I had one in London and I had one in Canada and between those two shows I managed to sell 10 copies of my vinyl. I didn't have big audiences and a lot of the people who attended my show already bought a copy of the vinyl, so that came into play. It should also be noted that I sustained a wrist injury in October of 2019 and my album release was in November of 2019, which meant I had to hire guitarists to play my release shows and I also had to cancel a bunch of gigs that I had planned around that time because I wasn't physically able to accompany myself. That was kind of a bummer. I did lose some money there and I also lost some good opportunities to promote my album. You live, you learn or you just get over it, which is what I've been doing. Which means I sold a total of 36 vinyl, which doesn't sound like a lot, but for me, that's actually a pretty big accomplishment. I also got some placed in record stores, but I haven't chased them up because soon after I placed them in the record stores, this pandemic hit and the record stores closed. So I might have to update this later to see if any of those have been sold and if I can add any of those to my tally. That means I have 36 records sold of 200 that I had printed. So we're gonna add these, add these profits together. 20 of my albums that I sold via mail were sold at a cost of 22 pounds plus two pounds shipping for national shipping charge because I didn't do the research properly before and I didn't want to overcharge people. So I made 24 pounds per unit on 20 of those copies. That comes to a total of 480 pounds. The remaining six were international sales. I also did not do the research properly, which I warned you about earlier when I said you should make sure you know what the shipping costs are. So I charged my customers three pounds for shipping when in fact it cost closer to four pound 50. So I lost a bit more on those, but I had six of those copies going out at 25 pounds, coming to a total of 150 pounds. The 10 copies that I managed to sell physically in person were sold at 22 pounds because they didn't need shipping, bringing us to a total profit of 850 pounds. Nowhere near what I spent. Are we ready? Cause we're gonna do this really quickly. So my expenses came to a total of 2,061 pounds and 14 pence. I managed to make 850 pounds in sales. 2,061 pounds and 14 pence minus 850 pounds comes to a total of 1,211 pounds and 14 pence. That's how much I have lost on this album but I don't consider it losing because I consider it an investment. This whole experience taught me so much about myself and about my music, and it taught me that your music is worth more than money. And having my album on vinyl and physically touching it, this is worth 1200 pounds to me. This feeling and this experience and being able to, to share this with people and see their eyes light up when they see the color that the vinyl is, that is worth 1200 pounds to me. I have approximately 150 of these. 
sitting in our bedroom closet. They're not being squished. They're being professionally stored, it's fine, but they are taking up space. We have done no touring this year because of COVID. I haven't been able to play any live shows either because I'm still dealing with my wrist injury. So that's been really frustrating, but I have 150 of these to sell. And if I can sell 150 of these, even if I'm selling them at 10 pounds, I would still be breaking even, and I know that I can do that. So hopefully I'll be able to sell some more of these. It was really relevant to me about my immigration year, but now it's really relevant again with 2020, and I feel like this will resonate with a lot of people. As mentioned, there's only 200 copies of the original one printed. So if you're interested in getting your hands on one of these, you found it helpful, you want to kick back, send me a message and we can organize a PayPal trade-off. I would be happy to sell these to anybody watching this video for like 15 pounds, which is seven quid cheaper than my website. Website. So if anybody's interested, send me a message. I would love to send you one or two. They make great Christmas presents too. And I would really love to see more people with these in their hands. I really hope that this was useful to you. I hope that I didn't discourage you from making vinyl because music isn't about short term gigs and making money quickly. It's about longevity in the industry and creating a sustainable music career. And sometimes that's investing in yourself. And that's what I consider this whole experience to be an investment in my career that helps me stand out from other artists because now as an independent artist I can say I have my album printed to vinyl and that's really big for me. I hope this inspired some of you to get your album printed. If you do have any other questions let me know in the comments below. I did want to cover as much as possible in this but I'm also very wary that I think this video is already going to be about 25 minutes long. If I did leave anything out let me know. I'll try my best to answer. On your way down to the comment section make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on because I release new videos every week on this platform and I would love to connect with you further. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.